So for this problem, if you wanted to do the derivative formula for ln, normally that requires us to do u primed over u. So then we'd have to take the derivative of this over itself. Of a fraction over a fraction, you'd have to do a, a quotient rule for that. That's going to be more complicated. So the reason why we talked about the logarithm rules at the beginning of this section is because we can make this problem a lot easier by using log properties instead of trying to do chain rules and quotient rules and things like that. So what we're going to do first is we're going to separate this. We're going to rewrite that problem as natural log of 2x minus the natural log of x plus 3. We're going to split it apart and you can do that because when you're dividing something it turns into a subtraction with log properties. So now I can just take the derivative of each of these separately. It's going to be a lot easier problem that way. So when I do y prime it's the derivative of 2x over 2x. That's the formula. The derivative of 2x is just 2. That's your u primed. In this case u is 2x all over the original one, all over 2x. Let's do this next one over here. This next one, you're going to do the x plus 3 on the bottom because that's your u. On the top, you're going to do the derivative of x plus 3, which is 1. So then we just end up with this, which we can reduce to 1 over x, the 2's cancel, and then I have 1 over x plus 3. You could leave your answer as two separate fractions, or if you'd like, you can get common denominators here. I'll get common denominators. We're going to multiply top and bottom here by x plus 3. Over here, you can multiply it by x. And then when we put that all together, you're going to get x plus 3 minus x. The x's are going to cancel, so x plus 3 minus x we have across the top. On the bottom, we have our common denominator x times x plus 3, so again 1 times all that, the minus sign don't forget, and then since the, th the uh, x's cancel, that means you can write your answer as this. The x's cancel, you get a 3 on top, and then that's as far as you need to go with your answer. So again, the, uh, the summary here is you definitely want to use your log properties because that problem was a whole lot easier to do than trying to deal with the, uh, the other way of doing it would be the derivative of 2x over x plus 3 all over 2x over x plus 3. Here's another problem that's going to benefit from us first using log properties to break this apart. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the one third down in front. There's a log property that tells us we can do that. We'll move it down front so we get one third natural log x minus 1 x plus 1. So that's the first step that we want to do. Next, what we want to do here is we can break this up one more time. So I can do one third on the outside and I can do natural log of x minus 1 minus natural log x plus 1. Okay, so we're doing that step. Division turns into subtraction. You got to remember to keep the one third on the outside. That's actually going to be multiplied all the way through. And then what I'll do is I'll multiply that one third out. One third natural log x minus 1 minus one-third natural log x plus one. So getting it down in this form, this means that we're ready to take the derivative. We've separated it as much as we can go. It's going to be a lot easier now to do the problem this way because we have separate terms because we've applied the log properties. When we apply the derivative, we have one-third and then we're going to apply the u primed over u formula for each of these logarithms. The u is x minus 1. That's going to go on the bottom. On top, we're going to do u prime. So the derivative of the inside, the derivative of x minus 1 is just 1. And then, over here, we're going to do the same thing. x plus 1 goes in the bottom. The derivative of the inside is 1. Okay, so that, that would be correct for your derivative. And so now the last thing we'll do is we'll just put this together. We have this, and then if you want to get common denominators, you can. I'm going to get common denominators for this one. Okay, uh, so for this, we have it broken up. To, uh, the 3 is already part of your common denominator. This one requires us to do x plus 1 top and bottom, x plus 1 top and bottom there. This one you can do x minus 1 top and bottom. And if we come over to here, we get 
x plus 1, and then you have a minus here that's going to be applying to both of them on the inside. So I'm just going to go ahead and multiply the negative by both of these. We get negative x, negative negative is plus 1, all that's over 3 times x minus 1, x plus 1. The x's are going to cancel out, so your final answer, most simplified answer, is going to be this one here. You could either leave it as x minus 1, x plus 1. If you wanted to multiply that out, you could, but it's sufficient to leave your answer like that in that form.